Hi Fizz, it's Burke here. Welcome back to this mini-series that I'm doing called the TikTok Iceberg, which is an iceberg which explains a disturbing slash horrifying slash gruesome TikTok trends that has happened before in the past and some of them are even currently uh, still happening for some reason. Today I'll be going through tier 3 and a little bit of tier 4. The reason why I won't be covering all of it is because I kind of want to upload this video today and uh, I don't have time to edit the rest of it because the next part is like fucking over an hour long. So so, if you don't know what an iceberg is, I'll give you a little overview. So an iceberg is basically a form of tier list where it starts kind of peaceful and then we go all the way down to like downright disturbing and crazy. At the moment, if you haven't watched the first part, there I'm going through tier 1 and tier 2. And in this video, I'll be going through tier 3 and a little bit of tier 4 because some of them kind of overlap. So I'm putting them together. Well, I'm putting some of them together. And then in the next video, I'll be going through the next one. Tier 3, the salt challenge. Pour salt directly into your mouth and see how much salt you can eat. A lot of people don't know this, but salt poisoning and water poisoning is like not even that much salt you need to eat before you can like, it can literally be fatal. Both with water also, I think water is like 5 liters of water you need to consume in like one sitting and where you'll get water poisoning and it'll be fatal. Luckily, I haven't heard of anything or in my research I didn't see anything be fatal, but you can get salt sickness from it. Uh, so yeah, just kind of stupid, but um, could be fatal, potentially. Cereal challenge. Uh, a person opens their mouth wide, then another person pours milk into it and then puts cereal into it and then they eat out of that. Seems like weird fetish content, to be honest. I remember that one vine that was like real long ago where a person did that and she started laughing and the milk and the cereal went everywhere. But again, not too bad, but it seems like kind of weird, like fetish-y-ish almost. Scalp popping. So in your scalp is not obviously directly connected to, there's like fat layers under your scalp. And if you pinch your scalp in the right way, then you'll get a little sound out of it which is in itself not that bad but the big problem is that there's a lot of really important blood vessels uh, down here and you can damage that it could damage your nerve endings also this is where it's down here there's been multiple cases where people have even like popped a fucking blood vessel up here you know in where in and slash around your most uh, important organ set the organ itself so therefore it's all the way down here the morning pill challenge. A rumor went around saying that in uh, the pregnancy test, if you open up the, the stuff, there's an emergency uh, plan B pill in there. And people would do a challenge where they took that afterwards having intercourse. So they would make sure that they won't get a child. A uh, big problem is that it's not that. It is poisonous. It is not a plan B pill. It is something to soak up the urine when you're peeing on the thing and then it will check if you're pregnant or not. Like a urinal tap, basically, you're eating, and it's poisonous. Not fatally, though, unless you eat like 15 of them or something like that. Even the company that made pregnancy tests uh, went out of their way to make a statement saying that uh, we do not make plan B pills. In fact, uh, we don't do that at all. The condom challenge is kind of difficult because there's technically two. There's the first one where you put a condom up your nose and then you have to uh, take it out of your throat, which is just like a silly, goofy party trick. And the other one is where you fill a condom with uh, water and then you drop it on someone's head, which is normally okay, but the problem is that condoms have to, like, this suction thing in it. So there has been multiple people almost drowning by getting the water on their head and then it kind of like sits around them and then they pop it on the outside and then the rest of it just sticks in here and then they have to make an opening in their mouth to actually get air so they could get asphyxiated. Dry scooping, kind of like the cinnamon challenge, but it's just dry scooping uh, protein powder. Not that bad, but it's just powder so it can get in your lungs and it can be kind of difficult to breathe afterwards. The Kia challenge. The Kia challenge is so fucking funny to me because the Kia challenge is literally just let's break into Kias and then have other people fill themselves breaking and stealing Kias, like the car Kia. And that shit is so fucking funny that a random dude one day was like, man, I fucking love stealing Kias. I'm gonna film myself stealing a Kia and then other people are like, yeah, I love stealing Kias. Kias, bro, that's so fucking funny. Obviously, illegal. Don't do that. I don't condone it, but I do think it's pretty funny. Even though you shouldn't steal Kias, it was actually because there was a fault in a lot of the Kias, which actually led to a big-ass lawsuit where Kia had to do a huge settlement. I think it was 200 million. 
and uh, they had to remake and fix up their security measures on their cars. So something good actually uh, went out of all of this from a bunch of dudes stealing Kias. Cha-cha slide. You're driving and then you put the like, oh no, I'm not a car guy. You do so the car continues to drive. And then you go on the other side and then you film yourself dancing next to the car. We don't have automated cars yet, so it can be kind of dangerous. But uh, I mean, if you're doing it in a parked road, in a, like a parking lot and there's no, no one else around, then fuck do I care. And there's also been uh, several near crashes and multiple crashes also. So, real good. The Dragon Breaths Challenge is eating a candy that is very popular in Malaysia and in the Philippines, where it's candy that is dipped in liquid nitrogen. And when you put it in your mouth, then it dissolves and becomes gas and then you get this like big like vape effect like every time you breathe out unfortunately uh, liquid nitrogen is not meant to be eaten and it has caused many children to have uh, had to go to the er and uh, be hospitalized because of it fortunately no one has died from it but uh, still poisonous and dangerous even though it looks cool for an instagram picture the nutmeg challenge when you talk about drugs there's usually two there's a stimuli and there is a, well, there's an upper and there's a downer. Then there is stimuli and then there is hallucinogenics. But there's also a fifth one. And the fifth one is called paranoia. And paranoids, they are very, very few and far between. And nutmeg is one of them. The whole challenge consists of eating enough nutmeg so you get high off it. But the problem is that the high you get off it is getting extremely fucking paranoid for multiple, multiple hours. That's it. That's a lot of where, like, kind of like Benadryl. If you take a bunch of Benadryl, then you get, like, meet the head man. Nutmeg is the exact same thing. I don't condone the uses of drugs. If you are gonna do drugs, I can't stop you. And then at least do something that's fun. And don't do paranoids because that's fucking crazy. So you get like anxiety, sweating, bad hallucinations, see your mom explode in a million pieces, stuff like that. Verbal abuse challenge. Fucking crazy. It's literally just parents filming themselves screaming at their children. That's it. I don't see how that's a challenge. It just seems fucking crazy to me. But it's to show them how they're disciplining uh, their child. It's sometimes it's also people saying like doing jokes and then their parents are like clapping back in them in the like making a stitch video which is kind of funny so that could for example be this one which is motherfucker dented my car and said i was an accident and then the dad responded with motherfucker you were an accident which is kind of funny i like it but not the first part the fish tank challenge in fish tanks there is something called methylene blue and that is antifungal it uh, has a very cool color also and uh, people uh, started saying that this has a bunch of other health benefits if you actually drink it. I will tell you right now, even though I'm not a doctor, it's basically the same as drinking bleach. And you should not do that. So uh, yeah, just uh, people on the internet telling you to drink poison. Again, it's there's a lot of these ones that are just people telling you to drink poison. Good job. Thank you. Slap a teacher challenge. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. It's people slapping the shit out of that teacher and then filming it. And I know in America, the schools are already fucking rough, right? But that is so fucking insane, making a challenge out of literally, like, beating your teacher. The amount of disrespect that goes on in there is actually fucking insane. And I know children can go fucking rowdy and crazy, but that even to me is, like, fucking bruh. But I will say uh, there has still not been any proof delivered that this has actually ever happened. The fire challenge consists of you putting aerosol on your body and then lighting on fire. Problem is just aerosol sticks to your body really, really well. And the stuntmen have used that stuff before, but they usually don't use that now because it's really difficult to get off. So it just ended up being a lot of people uh, getting severe burns. The silhouette challenge. Women would be, well, also men would be like dancing sex in front of a camera and then the light would switch up and there would be red light and then they would be naked and then you'd just be able to see their sexy, beautiful silhouette. But the thing is that it was a filter. With a little movie magic, you would be able to see their entire nude body because people were actually fucking nude in their silhouette for some reason. Just stupid because it's online and you shouldn't do that if you're not willing to be nude online. If you catch my drift. People found a way to reverse it so people would be able to see their entire cooter and 
all that jazz. The fractal burning challenge. I'm not sure you can really call that a challenge, but the whole idea is that you put a piece of wood into your microwave and then science stuff happens and then you can see these cool lightnings that go through the wood, which is very cool. The problem is uh, wood is uh, highly flammable. I'm not sure if you knew that, but wood is highly flammable. And there's been multiple reports of people having their microwave literally blow up because it became too hot. And the final results, if it actually works well, it looks like kind of lightning has gone through the wood, which can look kind of cool. But it is very dangerous because uh, there has been a case of a 44-year-old woman and a 52-year-old man which has uh, tried to do fractal burning themselves and their entire house went up on fire. It's not a part of this challenge. This is just a side note, just to make sure that you understand that it is quite fucking dangerous. And they have been doing fractal burning. Their entire house went up on fire and both people, unfortunately, lost their lives. Corona, the Rona challenge, it's literally just people seeing... Uh, how bad corona really is then they go out of their way to get corona to see how bad it is i've had it twice it's pretty bad the ice cube challenge challenge where you put ice cubes places where they shouldn't be uh, use your imagination not that bad but uh, not that good either and especially not on a I, i'm gonna call tiktok a children's site because it's predominantly teams and children that use it and i do not like uh, other people sexualizing themselves on apps that are not meant for adults just a little side note the libello challenge actually made me say what the fuck i don't know i swear all the time but i don't know why i was so afraid of doing it this time the idea is that there's two sides of it there's the first one which is like you would put it on it's a, a lipstick by the, no not a lipstick it's a uh, it's like vaseline what the fuck is it called it's a lip balm thank you jesus christ it's a lip balm right and then people would put the lip balm on and then they would like try to kiss people and see when it would come off right but then there's also a darker side of it and the other challenge which put it on this list you would buy a libello and then every time something bad or you felt sad, you would remove a little piece of it. And then you would continue removing a piece of it until it was over, like you didn't have any more libello in it. And then the teenager would then be saying their goodbyes and then supposedly, allegedly go out and kill themselves. There is no proof that this has ever happened, but it has been a trend that has gone around where people have at least believed that this is something that has happened. And the French government and Labello also came out and did a statement to parents and teens and uh, suicide help hotlines to try to combat this that is happening. Uh, but again, no proof that it actually has happened. But there's proof of peeing saying that they're doing it, right? So we don't know. The NyQuil chicken or the sleepy chicken is so god awfully fucking funny and i can't stop laughing at it i'm gonna put a picture up of it because that shit is so fucking funny it's literally just a boiling chicken in nyquil which makes it literally completely purple and it looks so fucking disgusting and it's so funny i do not the reason it's here is because that if you were to eat that chicken you would without a doubt a hundred percent die that chicken is so overloaded with sleeping agent that you would a hundred percent die there is no proof that anyone has actually done it. Well, has eaten it, but there's proof of people doing it. And then a little funny meme text like, gonna have the best sleep of my life. But there is no proof that anyone has actually ever done it. And I do think it's quite fucking funny because it looks so disgusting. But if you were to eat that, you would 100% die. But no proof, so I'm gonna make jokes about it. The milk crate challenge is where you stack uh, milk crates on top of each other and see how high you can go. Uh, unfortunately, milk crates are not the most stable, stable building material. And then people would go up the milk crate and then it would uh, crack under their weight and then they'll fall down. And milk crates also can be very sharp and there's been uh, multiple times where people have hurt themselves pretty, pretty badly. There is an unknown woman that has not died of it, but she has sustained a massive injury from going all the way up on the milk crates and then it cracking under her and then her falling in a really bad way. The blackout challenge is a challenge where you are restricting another person's breathing so they black out. I know multiple friends that did this as like a funny gag in their youths. I never did part of it. But I think this is just one of those things that every generation has some sort of blackout challenge. Now we just have the internet so people fill themselves while doing it. But obviously uh, restricting airflow to your brain is uh, really dangerous. Uh, and the blackout challenge, I remember when it popped up in my country many, many years ago when I was a teen and doing that, where there was deaths. And there's also been reported numerous deaths of this in America because your body doesn't get oxygen. So if you don't get oxygen and your body doesn't work as it should be, or if you're blacked out for too long, uh, you need to immediately seek help. And therefore it's so far here because there 
this is proven that there has been multiple deaths for this. The Benadryl challenge. The Benadryl challenge is an online challenge, obviously, because it's from TikTok. Well, it's also from just the general internet. Uh, and it's kind of like the nutmeg challenge, but Benadryl is a bit of a harder drug. Like you need to consume less Benadryl to get the desired effect. But kind of like nutmeg, uh, Benadryl is also a paranoid, which makes you extremely paranoid. And it also is incredibly dangerous because it's a prescription drug. And if you don't know what Benadryl is, it's usually allergy medicine. Like if you have pollen allergy or if you have cat allergy or something like that, that's usually how you take it. But the challenge consists of uh, people filming themselves taking excessive amounts of Benadryl and then afterwards uh, showing what happens. I unfortunately cannot do the Benadryl challenge as I owe the head man money. Now, in the Benadryl challenge, obviously I said before that it's extremely dangerous and I'll give you some examples. There's been numerous hospitalizations of people doing the Benadryl challenge and there was even three teens who got uh, administered to the Cook's Children Medical Facility after taking 14 Benadryl themselves. They all survived, but they did get critical injuries. Someone that unfortunately wasn't that lucky was in 2023, Jacob Stevens, age 13, from Columbus, Ohio, that filmed himself, well, his friends filmed him while he consumed Benadryl uh, in large quantities and got administered to the intensive care after he basically immediately started seizuring up. And after six days of intensive care, and on the mechanical ventilation, he unfortunately lost his life. Hi, you probably remember me from the start of the video. I'm a Fisberg. Well, I'm Burke. I really hope you enjoyed that video. It was very fun to make and it was very long to make. I still have one more part left, which is uh, super in-depth and uh, very long. I have uh, an over an hour recorded footage, so hopefully I'll be able to cut it down in something that feels nice and feels good. If you enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe. It really does help out a lot. And I'm extremely thankful for all the support I've been getting at the start of this series. And hopefully you'll continue to support me doing this series. If you enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe. It really does help out a lot. And I know that this iceberg is pretty horrifying and there is some of the challenges which are kind of humorous, uh, but also some challenges that are just uh, downright evil. So I do hope that you found some sort of information slash education slash humor in this video. And um, on that, I don't have that much more to say. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.